Fox Sports. We are Black Fox. We are Minnesota. Up the middle, sharply, face hit, and off the wall. With a drive to center field, no chance. Got it. Got it. A strikeout looking. After an impressive three game sweep in Baltimore, the Twins are back home in Minneapolis. It's been a while since we've seen the team with a two game lead this far into the season. You have to go all the way back to 2010, but that's where the Twins are as they start a six-game homestand tonight. Tough opposition awaits them on the mound. Chris Archer, 77 strikeouts, top five in Major League Baseball. The Twins will try to counter with Hector Santiago, undefeated in three decisions here at Target Field. This is your pitching matchup for game one of this three-game series between Minnesota and Tampa Bay. And Twins baseball on Fox Sports North is presented by State Farm. Welcome inside Target Field as we get ready for a big six-game homestand and a big three-game series. Let's set it up right now. As we take a look at the visitors from Tampa Bay, it's been feast or famine. These guys have big-time power. Third in the league with 68 home runs, but they're the lowest team in baseball with 521 strikeouts. You can whip them. You can get them swinging for the fence, and you have good stuff. The Twins are looking for good stuff here at Target Field. They're at baseball best 14 and 5 away from home, but they're below 500 at Target Field. They'll try to get back on track at Target Field by winning some games within this six game homestand over the holiday. And Evan Longoria has been really good against the Twins and in this ballpark. In his last 16 against the Twins, eight home runs and 19 RBIs. If Minnesota wants to win, they've got to shut down the third baseman from Tampa Bay. Up next, we take a look at addressing the target. Can the Twins put a bullseye on the ball thrown by Chris Archer? Dick Bramer and Jack Morris with the game plan for the Red Hot Twins against one of baseball's best.
All on Fox Sports North is presented by Toyota. Tested, trusted Toyota. Toyota, let's go places. By Century Link, connecting you to the power of the digital world. By Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, for the everyday competitor in all of us. And by Jeep, test drive a Jeep brand vehicle at the Jeep Memorial Day sales event going on now. A beautiful night at Target Field as we get this holiday weekend of baseball underway. The first of three between the Twins and the Rays. It'll be the Tampa Bay ace Chris Archer going for the Rays and Hector Santiago on the mound for the Minnesota Twins. And we welcome you to Target Field. Dick Bramer along with Jack Morris. The Rays year in and year out have a very good starting rotation and they've got another good one this year and their ace is on the mound tonight Chris Archer. He's been on a roll with strikeouts as of late and the Twins have had a tough time over there over his career against Chris Archer. He's done very very well. You can see five and one with a one seven three ERA that includes a three and oh uh, mark here at Target Field. So the Twins are going to have their hands full. They're going to be sending out their left hander Hector Santiago. You can see some of the highlight pitches here for Archer. Uh, they say that his fastball has been down in the zone and that's created a lot better uh, slider for him. And uh, he'll be taking them out tonight. Hector Santiago will be his mound opponent. And really all they're looking for from Hector is a little more consistency. Too many pitches and five six innings and he's done. So they want him to get a little bit deeper. They've been working on his body control and the side just trying to repeat his delivery a little bit better and more consistently. He doesn't throw change ups to left handers. That's something we're going to have to watch tonight to see if he throws that uh, curveball over for strikes. The Twins have been outstanding on the road and they hope to have uh, Hector Santiago get this homestand started on the right foot with a well pitched ball game. are taking some great pictures of the Twins successful stop in Baltimore. They won all three games and there were a lot of smiles in those pictures 
And there should be. This Twins team has uh, played very good baseball generally, specifically on the road. And now Hector Santiago would love to get this homestand started with a Twins win. Kevin Cash has his Rays team at the 500 mark. That's not unusual territory for them. At 25 and 25, it is the 15th time this year that they have been at the 500 mark. Here's the Menards batting order for the Rays. Tim Beckham leading off. Corey Dickerson, Evan Longoria, Logan Morrison, Steven Souza Jr., Kevin Kiermeyer, Ricky Weeks, Derek Norris, and Daniel Robertson. One through nine. They all strike out a lot. And Beckham in the box to face Santiago on the first pitch over for a strike. Hector's making his 10th start and he's looking to rebound from his last start where he did not uh, get a decision uh, allowed a season high eight hits over five innings consistency is what we need out of him three and oh here at home this year in five starts so hopefully home cooking will do him right one and one Santiago's pitched well here he's one of the few players that's actually done better here than on the road. Swing and a miss, one and two. Chris Guccione is behind the plate. Carlos Torres at first, James Hoy at second, Dana DeMuth at third. Santiago ahead of Beckham, one and two. And now two and two. All right, we can see a change already. This is something they were talking about working on. Hector is not really even taking a windup. It's almost like he's coming out of a stretch because he doesn't want to go what Neil Allen calls east to west. He wants to go north to south, meaning from the rubber right towards the catcher's glove. So to avoid all that movement, he's just pitching basically out of the stretch to start that's the game. Hook down the line and a foul ball. Yeah, that's uh, that's a stretch position. That's the same delivery he'll use with men on base. Northland for defense for the Twins. Rosario, Buxton, Kepler in the outfield. Left side of the infield has done so well so far this year. Sonoa, Polanco, Dozier, and Maurer, of course, very good on the right side. Castro behind the plate. Were you ever an over the hands guy? Like early in my hands career. Hands over your head. Yeah, early in my career. And what, you, what made me change? Is that your next question? Yeah. Watching Brett Sager Haven. Brett Saberhagen one day I just watched how he just paused at his belt and I said to myself all right if I throw 120 pitches that's 120 presses over my head that I don't need to be doing and so I quit because I figured it was ex extended energy that I didn't need that's the first of what we anticipate will be many strikeouts in this game and in this series Beckham goes down looking one down the Rays average more than 10 strikeouts a game. Well, that was clearly a strike and a little bit of a breaking ball. Obviously, Beckham was just kind of locked up, but trying to keep things compact so that Hector can have a little more consistency in hitting uh, Jason Castro's glove. One down, here's Corey Dickerson. Dickerson having a great year in his second year with the Rays. Fouled back. Now, you discussed it in the pregame, I believe. The warped splits that Santiago has with left handers hitting 500 against him. Yeah, left handers, and this is not the way it usually is, are uh, 13 for 26 off Hector, and right handers are 35 for 167. Right handers are only hitting 210. And that's because he's able to throw that changeup down and away to right handers, but he doesn't really feature it much to the left handers. Now he's ahead of Dickerson 0 and 2. There you see the splits. Now clearly he's facing a lot more right handers than left handers and that's typical. Swing and a foul. The Rays team has played 50 games. The Twins have only played 43. That's another matter for discussion throughout the weekend, how that is even possible. But in 50 games, the Rays have struck out 521 times. Crazy number. Crazy number. 
One strikeout for Santiago, 0 2, and now right off the end of the batter foul. Good breaking ball. Kept it away. They're on a pace to shatter, not just break, but shatter the record for strikeouts in a season broken last year by the Milwaukee Brewers, 1,543. They're on a pace for just under 1,700 strikeouts as a team. Well, it's it's not totally surprising when you have a team that hits home runs. Typically, guys that hit home runs strike out a lot. They're trying to do something a little special, and they're taking that extra harder swing, hopes and hopes that they're going to lift and separate, and drive the ball into the seats, and occasionally they're going to miss. Eleven pitches, eight strikes for Hector Santiago. A long battle here with Dickerson. Strikeout number two. That'll bring up Evan Longoria. A couple of times in his career, he's absolutely worn out in Twins pitching, and last year was one of those years. Seven home runs in seven games. Talked to him briefly before the game today, had a big smile on his face, and why not? <laughs> and didn't have to move his feet once, apparently. <laughs> Two down, and here's Longoria. He was on a roll last year, no question about it. And a first pitch strike. Well, he starts him up with a fastball away. Strike zone about belt high, outer half of the plate. Just off the corner. There's the good changeup right there. And that's what he does to the right hand hitters. He's able to spot that ball arm side down and away, but has a little confidence in throwing a glove side. Poke foul and Santiago ahead now one and two. You played with guys that were high strikeout guys. It was Rob Deere on your no. any of your Tiger teams. No. That was afterwards. I was one of the guys having fun with them. <laughs> <laughs> Striking them out. Yeah. One and two to Longoria. Longoria on a pace to shoot past 100 strikeouts. Longoria's got a pretty good idea of the strike zone. You rarely get him to chase out of the zone. He's pretty patient up there. Foul back. Looks like the ball's getting on these guys quicker, and that might be part of the reason they're striking out. Uh, you never know what their approach is, but it looks like they're letting the ball travel deep. And when you let the ball travel deep, sometimes it gets by you. This ball clearly is uh, on top of Evan Longoria before he realizes it. Another foul. Staying with the heater when he's ahead. That's two back to back fastballs. I think we've only had one swing and a miss at Dickerson's a strike three. And all the others have been foul balls. Making contact, but not obviously solid contact. 18 pitches, 13 strikes for Santiago. And another foul ball. Santiago part of a twin starting rotation that has an ERA of 4.16 that is significantly better than it was last year and sixth in the American League the American League average is 4.23 so the twins rotation marginally better than the league average long hold by Santiago and now he misses three and two. Well, Hector's really had two separate months. He had a real good start. The month of April was really good to Hector, and uh, he struggled a little bit with consistency in the month of May. Another foul ball. He's pounding fastballs. Of course, what all the foul balls do is run up the pitch count. We've yep. seen that from Santiago. He is not. Someone who's going to often pitch beyond the sixth inning. No, he's five, five and two thirds quite often. His longest outing this year was seven innings against the White Sox in the middle of April. On the ground, Sano scoops it up. Well, he stayed with it and got him to hit a brown ball. A one, two, three first for Hector Santiago, including surprise, surprise, 
a couple of Rays strikeouts. Start Paul Molitor and the Twins leading the American League Central by two game starting play today. Menards batting order for the Twins in the first of a six game homestand. Ryan Dozier leading off. Joe Mauer second, Miguel Sano followed by Max Kepler, then Kenny Vargas, Jorge Polanco, Eddie Rosario, Byron Buxton, and then the catcher Jason Castro. They're going to be facing the right hander, uh, Rays ace Chris Archer, three and three on the year. But Archer's really done well here at Target Field. He's 3 0, 5 1 lifetime against the Twins with a very, very good 173 ERA. Had 12, 12 strikeouts in his last game against the Yankees, and right handed here for 0 for 14. Rays have a great pitching staff, but they do uh, not have the best defense in the world. And that has uh, helped explain why they're a 500 ball club. Dickerson, Kiermaier, really good in center, of course. Souza is right, Longoria, Beckham, Robertson, Morrison. And Derek Norris behind the plate. Brian Dozier to get things started for the Twins. Twins haven't played well at home, just 11 and 13, and this is a, a very tough homestand in terms of uh, run production, or will be. The top two teams in the American League in ERA Tampa Bay, followed by Houston. So we'll see how much run scoring the Twins can get done in this homestand. Dozier fouls it back, one and one. Well, there's a little bit of sun for one guy. That's the center fielder, Kevin Kiermaier. He's out there trying to find a spot where he can see the pitchers, pitches, and uh, react to the baseball. But for about another half inning or so, it's going to be tough on him. One and one to Dozier. And foul straight back. Take a look at the pitch arsenal for Chris Archer. About half his pitches are fastballs. He's got a very, very good slider, and they say his slider is much better this year because he's keeping his fastball down in the zone. And when you keep your fastball down, that slider that's down sometimes goes out of the zone that you chase. He used to throw more changeups than he does now, but he's kind of laid off that because he's had such success with that uh, slider. See 91, but you will see 94, 95. And it, as they say, is an easy 94. Yeah. He doesn't look like a max effort guy out there. Yeah, he's pretty fluid. Uh, it's one thing Jim Hickey stresses with all his pitchers. Jim Hickey, the pitching coach for uh, the Tampa Bay Rays, uh, he seems like he's taught the whole organization change us. But right now, Chris Archer's slider, you can see how it starts about knee high, and then it just breaks out of the zone. And it's hard to lay off that when the fastball stays knee high. And you know you start the, the slider down there and break it down back foot in there on that left hander. He's just really good at this year at keeping that slider down and very hard for the hitters to lay off of it. And that's what happened to Dozier as yep. you saw a 91 mile per hour wipeout slider one down. Here's Mauer and there's strike one.
He recorded five straight outs against the Yankees his last time out. Five straight outs, five straight strikeouts to start the game. Ended up giving up three earned runs in six and a third. Start before that, the Indians kind of knocked him around in five innings. He gave up six earned runs. Bauer swings through 97. I short changed Archer. Yeah. Maybe he's uh, been in the weight room a little bit this year, but we haven't seen the high 90s off him in quite a while. The twins enjoyed for years when they were at their zenith and winning divisions every year. The Rays weren't very good. Mauer enjoyed hitting in Tropicana Field, and Mauer strikes out. Wow. That, that is, breaking ball. That is a good slider right there. Well, the fastball is 97, yeah. and the slider is 91. That's a pretty deadly combination. Well, what's happened is he went up in the zone with the fastball, and then that one's just back foot. I mean, that's classic right there. When you see Joe Mauer swing and miss that much, you know, and I'm serious when I say that, Joe does not miss that many pitches like that, but uh, I think that's about as good as you can pitch Joe Mauer, and he, he just totally ate him up there. Here's Sano, each starting pitcher starting with a pair of strikeouts. And Sano lifts one. The upper deck over the Twins dugout, one strike. So no, did not have a good finish to his series in Baltimore. He had an impactful first game. I don't know if there's anything to Miguel Sano's numbers as a DH versus a guy playing in the field, but it seems like he's more in tune when he's at third base than he is when he's trying to figure out what to do in between at bats. Of the difference between Sano as a fielder and as a designated hitter. <laughs> oh, and two with Archer trying to strike out the side. Whoa. 98 over the inside corner, but neck high. Just off the outside corner, and it's two and two. And we're seeing a kid that seems to have found a little more velocity. Archer is throwing a couple here, 98, up in the zone, and that might just be to set up this next pitch, which I'm guessing is going to be a slider. And there it is, in a good spot, a swing and a miss. And Archer strikes out the side in a scoreless first.
Sports North is presented by Chevrolet, the number one selling brand in the Twin Cities. And by Budweiser. This Bud's for you. Each starting pitcher has a one, two, three first inning. A total of five strikeouts will go to the second. And it will be Logan Morrison, Steven Souza Jr., and Kevin Kiermaier. Yeah. Well, Hector throwing strikes early in the game. That's a good sign. He did throw 22 pitches in the first inning. Fly ball to right center field. Buxton, Kepler, and it's Buxton calling him off one away. One quick out here in the second. Let's go to Kevin Gord. Thank you, Dick. It's time for our car soup scoop from the clubhouse. Paul Mauder talked about the win in Baltimore, the series win. So it's a high point for the season. He hopes they can build on it this weekend. Throughout the year, he's been very happy with the fundamentals, the base running, and the solid defense his team has shown. And he also lined up the pitchers for the weekend. Mahia tomorrow, Gibson Sunday, back to the top of the rotation. Urban Santana, holiday Monday, guys. Holiday Monday. A day game on a Monday. Must That's be a holiday. Right. Yeah. Must be a holiday. Yeah. Three uh, afternoon games in a row as a result of uh, Saturday afternoon's game, Sunday afternoon, Monday afternoon. Houston Astros come to town after the Rays leave. And the weather can't possibly be as good all week or during the homestand as it is here tonight. This is just absolutely perfect weather. I would, uh, I would agree with that. It doesn't get a whole lot nicer. No wind, hardly any breeze at all, but yet it's. Cool enough to be pleasant and warm enough. One and two to Seuss make a smile. I guess. Well, the Twins have certainly endured more than their share of bad weather this spring. So they are working quickly up and away. Coming into today, there were 26 postponements in the major leagues. And the Twins were involved in five of them. Now they've made two of them up with the Double headers in the last homestand. And then the first game of the White Sox Tiger game was postponed. So we've already had more. There's a call, third strike, two down. With today's postponement between Detroit and Chicago, we've already had more postponements in the major leagues than we had all of last year. Boy, I'll tell you, I haven't seen guys take so many pitches in the strike zone. That's a fastball. That's not a that's not an overly surprising pitch there, and yet. Susan Jr. just locked up. Here's Kevin Kiermeyer. There are three typical results for the Rays. They strike out a lot, they walk a lot, they hit a lot of home runs, and there's a single by Kiermeyer on the first pitch. That'll bring up Ricky Weeks. Well, we saw in uh, Hector's last start that the other team was uh, jumping on the first pitch a lot. Hector uh, faced the San, uh, Kansas City Royals his last start. Kansas City was swinging early in counts, and I imagine that was because they figured that he was trying to work ahead because he's been a little bit erratic. Well, today he's primarily throwing strikes. Almost everything he's throwing strikes. But there, Kiermaier jumped on the first pitch. There's veteran, now utility player, designated hitter Ricky Weeks. Outside, ball one. And Weeks hasn't been an everyday player for the Rays. Hitting just 213. He has 80 at bats, and he has struck out 41 times. Foul back, and it's one and one. Oh, you say that like there's a problem. Striking out more than half your time? <laughs> that would be a problem. <laughs> you would think it'd be a problem, but we're seeing more and more of it. It's almost like it's become acceptable. The acceptance of strikeouts is a big reason that baseball is concerned about the the pace of play but when the ball isn't put in play a three hour game seems to be three hours and 40 minutes and when the ball's put in play a three hour and 40 minute game seems like it's three hours 
at least to me. It's another strike taken. And I, I would argue that a three hour and 40 game minute game is like three hours and 40 minutes or more. Even if there's a lot of I mean out. anything that's over two hours and 25 minutes to me oh, is a four hour game. Crawl back into your flannel uniform. <laughs> what do you <laughs> move it along? <laughs> two and two. Missed inside three and two, and now Kiermaier will take off for second base. I think that was the beauty of Urban Santana's last start is the fact that he went nine innings, got a complete game, another two hit shutout, second one of the year. Two hours and 25. 225, 229, something like that. Full count, Santiago to Weeks. Playing him straight away, Joe Maurer holding the runner, Kiermaier, on at first. Struck him out. Two more strikeouts for Santiago and for the Rays. And we head to the second inning and bottom of the second. Kepler will lead off for the Time now for the BMW Mini Countryman Player Profile, looking at the most strikeouts from the pitcher uh, pitchers of perspective since 2015. Max Scherzer, Chris Sale, and Chris Archer's right up there. We've already seen evidence as to why that might be. Well, no kidding, uh, Archer. He's been durable. That's the one thing you got to give Chris Archer. He's a guy that somehow is resilient so he must have a very good workout program but he's got good mechanics and that's the other thing that keeps him healthy. Kepler Vargas and Polanco. Ah the outside corner. Kepler lefty Vargas Polanco of course switch hitters. Once with three switch hitters on the bench. Escobar Adrianza and Grossman. Just off the corner at 89. Two and one. First changeup, I think, that Archer's thrown right there. You can see. The last two pitches are trying to stay Derek Norris the catcher and Chris Archer trying to stay away from Max Kepler. It seems like the entire league has got that scouting port. On the ground sharply to Beckham but right at him. One down. One down let's get tonight's showstopper from Kevin Gord. Yeah guys the showstopper in baseball takes us to Fenway Park where the Boston Red Sox speaking of strikeouts. Their staff had it going on last night five different pitchers against the Rangers. 20 of the 27 outs were strikeouts. Their starter, Drew Pomerantz, 
Six innings and 11 strikeouts, 20 in total, a 6-2 win. They're fourth in a row, and we're on some kind of pace here tonight. Seven of the first 10 outs here, strikeouts at Target Field. Against the Texas Rangers, and of course the Red Sox are going to bring back David Price on, I believe, Monday. And Vargas taking a belt-high strike. And so Price, when he's right, when he's healthy, and we don't know that, that he will be, uh, healthy all year long, but he figures to pick up more than his share of strikeouts, too. One strike to Vargas and a drive to right. Souza retreating and leaping and making the catch on the warning track. Nice catch by Souza. Catching Vargas's line drive for out number two. Kenny Vargas took a nice, easy swing right there, the barrel of the bat. Met that high fastball, high 90s fastball, and it was a rocket right out there. But Susan knew that he'd have to get back, and then he leaps onto the warning track. Makes a very nice catch. Seen a lot of visiting right fielders not play the ball that well with the wall behind them. But uh, Souza acted like he's played here quite a bit before. Two down, here's Polanco. Pull shift on the infield for Polanco. One strike. And we saw that first pitch slider down and in, so Archer's going to pitch to the shift. Try to stay in. This time he's going away. And Polanco flips it foul. Two strikes. Longoria swings over to the right side and Beckham goes back to his shortstop position. 0 oh 2 to Polanco. Half swing. Did he check? Yep. And it says it's 1 and 2. Close. One and two. Tap foul. Chris Archer's really done a, a great job so far of keeping that breaking ball down. He hasn't left any up over the plate. They've all been knee high or below knee high. And for all you young pitchers that want to throw a breaking ball, take a look at this kid and what he's doing. Keeping that ball down. Ninety-six, but off the plate. One thing about Polanco is he's very good at knowing the strike zone, and he doesn't chase up in the zone. I, I can't remember the last time I saw him chase up in the zone. Fly ball to left center field, retreating is Kiermaier. He makes the catch. Twins put three balls in play in the second, but they're all outs. And we head to the third scoreless.
presented by Northland Ford. Visit buyfordnow.com and your local Northland Ford dealer today. By Grand Casino, the best stories start here. And by Menards, save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. With Kevin Gore, Jack Morris, Dick Bramer here at Target Field, good to be back home. The Twins can play the type of baseball at home that they played on the road. And a couple of tough teams here in this homestand with the Rays who pitch well, the Astros, best team in the American League, they pitch well. Derek Norris will lead off the third for the Rays. Driven foul down the right field line, one strike. It's look, it looks a little different without that long, long hair that he sported as a member of the Oakland Athletics. Still got the beard. Still got the beard. Santiago, even though he faced four men in the second, had a much quicker time in the second inning. Now Baxton going back, still going back. Buxton back to the wall. Makes the catch. 400 feet from home plate. One down. Join us Monday, May 29th. The Twins take on the Astros. It is Memorial Day, of course, and the first 10,000 fans receive a Brian Dozier T-shirt. Go to twinsbaseball.com slash tickets. Get your tickets to Brian Dozier T-shirts and your ticket to summer. And it's nice to see fans wearing T-shirts to the ball game today. Now, now, did I read that right? Did it say medium or extra large, or is it medium through extra large? Medium through, I would guess. I would hope so. Because, because there are a lot of larges out there, <laughs> right? Well, or double X or smalls. There's Daniel Robertson, and he takes ball one. Robertson, good fielding second baseman, not hitting much so far. And Santiago hits the corner. Well, both pitchers have been doing a good job early in this game of getting head of hitters. First pitch strikes. That time, Hector threw a ball to lead off the hitter. That pitch just missed two and one. And now two and two. I think overall, both Hector Santiago and Neil Allen, his pitching coach, have got to be satisfied with this little bit change, little tweak in the deliveries. Basically pitching out of the stretch, and that's simplifying his delivery home. Fly ball right field. Kepler drifts back. On the edge of the track makes a catch for out number two. Well, the lengths that fans will go to get a baseball. Oh my! Is intriguing. Stitches, bruises. You know. I could see Dick Bremer diving over a couple rows. I would have trying to steal it from him. I would team. have. I wouldn't have caught it, but I, I would. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> I bet you I went to you know, a hundred major league games before I got my first foul ball. See, I, I outthunk it. I didn't have to do that during the game because I'd go to the old Met as a kid, and climb underneath the bleachers on the third base line during batting practice, and there'd be at least six or seven balls. Is that right? Yeah, every time I went. You still have them? No, I wish I did because they were old Reese yeah. baseballs. Yeah. One strike. And now two. I was an adult for many years, and I caught a foul ball off the bat of Ryan Sandberg in San Diego as a spectator. And I, I'm not proud of it. I think I acted like an eight year old child. <laughs> I wish we had video of that. Swing and a miss. Santiago has another one, two, three inning. He has struck out five, and you are watching Twins Baseball, presented by State Farm.
you go trout fishing and watch live horse racing or play cards all in one location. Running Aces Casino and Racetrack, fun for all ages and only 25 minutes north of downtown. Horse racing is a perfect summer night outing. You'll be so close to the action, you'll think you're in the race. Visit runaces.com for special promotions and events. Find endless ideas for the perfect getaway at exploreminnesota.com slash escapes. Share your favorites with hashtag only NMN. Now, Jack Morris, you like I enjoy hunting and fishing. Uh, are you a fly fisherman? Used to be. I had my place in Montana. I did a lot of it because I was surrounded by the best blue ribbon and trout, trout streams in America. I've enjoyed it when I've done it, and I haven't done much of it lately, sad to say. Rosario Buxton Castro will bat here in the Twins third. Archer struck out the side in the first. The Twins hit all the ball three times in the second for outs. And another four hopper. Kind of firmly to back up. And a high throw, and they're going to call him out. And Paul Molitor sticks a foot out of the dugout. We won't have the next at bat without at least a look at that. Rosario busted it down the line, and Beckham's throw nearly, if it didn't in fact pull, Logan Morrison off the bag. Well, Rosario's acting like he was out, and he would know. Yeah, I think he stayed on and then came off and then back. Let's see. Take a look. I don't know if we'll be able to see the foot. I don't know. Maybe his foot was off the bag as he received the ball. This angle will be the definitive one. Ball not challenging. There's the catch. If anything, it looks like Rosario's foot may have put Morrison's foot on the bag. One down, and now Buxton. Byron with the average slowly creeping towards 200. Byron was able to put a couple of balls on the ground in Baltimore and leg out some infield hits. Hopefully that's a sign that uh, the lights coming on for him that he knows that by making contact he puts pressure on not only the infield but everybody because it is great speed. 97 upstairs and a swing and a miss two strikes Boy, both these both of these pitchers tonight are just challenging hitters are coming right at them getting ahead in counts. This is no nonsense pitching for both guys. 30th pitch coming up for Archer He's already thrown 21 strikes. Well, he overthrew that was a slider first one that he overthrew and he knows it his body just got out in front of his arm. Consequently, the ball stayed up in the zone, didn't really spin much the way it's supposed to. One and two. Two down, and that'll bring up Jason Castro. Twins fans, if you can't catch the games on TV, you can stream them live on your mobile device with Fox Sports Go. Download the app, take Fox Sports North, and Twins Baseball with you wherever you go. Two gone. Neil Allen. Talking with Santiago. Yeah, and they're talking again. They're talking. I can see just by Neil's actions there. They're talking about that plane straight towards the catcher's glove and how to stay balanced. That's what this conversation is all about. And I think they're actually acknowledging that it's working better because it was an experiment. They both agreed that they were going to go down to the bullpen in Hector's last uh, side work. And just try it to see if he felt any better. And I think that's we're both agreeing that that's what this is all about. Off the mound, oh. and that hop really ate Beckham up, and Castro will reach. Beckham might get charged for an error, and let's check and see if he's hurt. But that ball hit the slope of the mound, and then the next hop with incredible topspin really bit and took a piece out of Beckham. Ouch. And if I'm the official score, I'm going to give them a hit, and they do. That's, uh, I mean, the ball just has an incredible amount of topspin when it hits the mound like that. And Castro will get an infield hit, and that'll bring up Dozier. Dozier struck out swinging his first time up. 
The Rays staff very good one through five. They've gone 15 games without allowing double digits in hits. And it's taken the ninth batter to get the first hit here tonight for the Twins. Dozier takes a strike on the outside corner. The Rays have three of the top five slowest guys in between pitches. And this guy is the third on their staff as far as time between pitches and it, you haven't noticed that tonight because he hasn't had any base runners right this is where it slows down a little bit for Chris Archer up oh, and it's one and one Dozier just two for 18 in his matchups with Archer. Just off the plate, two and one. Where does the power come from Archer? He's not the biggest guy in the world, but the ball just explodes out of his hand. Two places. He's got tremendous leg strength. He pushes and drives very well, but he also bends his back. Watch him follow through. How much extra he gets because he bends at the waist. Kind of the polar opposite of Phil Hughes. And there's 97 on the black. From the side, you see him get to the set position and then really push and drive. You see the back leg kicks up over his head. That shows that he's using every ounce of energy towards that catcher's glove. Two and two to Brian Dozier. Pops straight up in the air, backing out of play. Twins are on a pace to hit fewer home runs this year than last. At their current pace, they would hit 185. And of course, a big reason for that is Brian Dozier has six home runs. When last year he had 42. Yeah, but he didn't get most of those until about yeah, you're right. the end of May is when he started heating up. So there's still time, and I, I believe this Twins team will come close to last year's. Dozier swings and a foul tip into the glove of the catcher Norris. Castro left the board. We head to the fourth scoreless. Shut out in Baltimore. Got him looking. Broke. And he had no chance. No. Nope. Time now for our State Farm combination. The starting pitching, as we said, led by Santana and now Barrios has uh, done a very nice job. And the question is, you know, whether Santiago will be able to pitch to the form of April. Twins aren't sure what. If anything, they'll get from Phil Hughes the rest of the way with his uh, issues and his pitching arm. So Jose Barrios, who's three and zero, enjoying a great start. Corey Dickerson will lead off the four and a strike on the outside corner. Dickerson struck out. 
in the first. Well, it's been all pitching so far. Each pitcher just one hit allowed. And that skips through Santiago's legs and into center field for a leadoff single. A well hit ball right up the middle. Take a little more PFP, pitcher's fielding practice. We'll bring up Longoria, who had a last, a long at bat against Santiago in the first. Yeah, I think he threw one changeup. That was that one right there. Everything else was fastballs this entire at bat. And I don't know how many fouls off here, but quite a few. Running. Santiago's pitch count up to what was a 22 in the first inning, yeah. I believe. One strike, or excuse me, one ball to Longoria. And now 2 0. Evan Longoria at a very young age was stamped the face of the franchise in Tampa. They signed him. After what one or two years to a seems like a life contract, and he's lived up to it so far. In fact, uh, the Rays may have reaped the benefits of that contract more than Evan himself so far. And Longoria pretty much consigning himself to the never-ending challenge with this franchise to be competitive. They've done an admirable job of that. Over the last few years, three and one. You know, nobody wants to swing the bats against their pitching staff, and yet the pitchers have changed. Price is gone. Yeah. You know, well, and, I, and I give credit to their pitching coach, Jim Hickey. I think is uh, maybe the best pitching coach in all of baseball. Certainly one of the best. Every year he gets guys prepared. Fly ball center field and Buxton over. And of course you would have to to be fair give some of the credit to Archer's triple-a pitching coach Neil Allen. Neil Allen that was one of the reasons the twins went into the Tampa Bay system to hire a new pitching coach Archer worked with the Neil Allen David Price did and uh, I think James Shields did but you know, all top flight pitchers who moved on elsewhere mm -hmm. one down here's Morrison. A pitching factory we did a lot of things right in developing these guys. Swing and a miss, Morrison late. Well, in the early, basketball. early years, they had a lot of good draft choices. Yeah. Because of their poor performance at the major league level, they were getting some top draft choices, and they did well. I mean, it's one thing to get the top picks, it's another thing to get the right guys when you get the top picks and then develop them. Down and away, and it's one on one. Santiago, two and one. ERA of 2.43 in April. And May hasn't gone as well for him. They had the one really bad start in Cleveland, two and two thirds innings, six earned runs to give up three home runs in that ball game. Well, this has been his tough inning. Excuse me, third inning has really been the toughest inning for him as far as. Runs and hits per inning. For whatever reason, he's given up nine runs and 13 hits in the third inning. Three runs and nine hits in the fourth inning. So if he gets through these two innings, he usually gets a little deeper in the game. No complete games for Hector this year so far. Two 
do it too. And now three and two. And you see, I saw Jason Castro kind of pumping his shoulder, arms to his shoulders, basically saying, "Come hit my glove." And there's, there's ways to communicate for a catcher and a pitcher without ever having to go to the mound. Castro really not a guy that likes to go out to the mound too often. You saw Sousa, he's in the on deck circle. Full count to Morrison. So Dickerson takes off here from first base. He does not. And the pitch drilled to right. And a long home run for Logan Morrison, his 13th of the year. And it is two to nothing Rays. Handed batter doing more damage against Hector Santiago. Well, here's how Hector went at him on this at bat. He throws a couple breaking balls away, 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 but the fastball in where he had thrown it the very first pitch is where Logan Morrison ended up depositing in right field. Again, it's kind of amazing to me, but Hector. Very reluctant to throw changeups to left handers. And so they're sitting basically on the same speed, whether it breaks or not. So Fox tracks presented by Jeep. And now strike one to Steven Souza Jr. Twenty eight at bats against left handers. And that's the fourth home run hit. Against Santiago. One and one to Susan. That's hit to left. And Rosario goes back and makes the catch shoulder high at the edge of the track, two down. That'll bring us to Kiermaier. And for Santiago, the eighth home run allowed on the season. Kiermaier, breaking ball strike one. Singled in the second. A two out single, he was left aboard. Outside, one and one. Slower breaking ball missing, two and one. I guess that's his attempt for a changeup, a little off speed. He's taken a little off his breaking ball occasionally right to the left handed hitters. Count even. The home run by Morrison, their 69th home run of the season. Just off the edge. And another three ball count. Pitch number 67 coming up for Santiago. Full of three ball counts. He hasn't walked anybody yet. And that will spin over the tarp and out of play. Raised five games out of first, playing 500 baseball. Starting to make a move. They're getting better. They're trying to compress the division there in last place. Well, Hector trying to make a pitch here and get the guys into the dugout. Three and 
three two count. Got to throw it over here. Whoa. And Kiermaier goes to first. Where was the pitch? Well, it was a breaking ball, and whether it stayed in the upper part of the strike zone or not, starts out out of the zone. But man, called that one. Plenty of the plate. Kiermaier draws a walk. Umpires make mistakes. They sometimes are reluctant to admit that, but they do make mistakes. But now Ricky Weeks, who struck out swinging his first time up. First to walk at the ball game for either pitcher. Uh, Weeks looked very tardy on a 91 mile per hour fastball. One and one. And Hector seems to be rushing a little bit right now this inning after the home run from Morrison. It seems like he got out of his rhythm a little bit. One and two. But Weeks has. A lot of trouble with the ball away from him. You can just locate down and away here, no matter what pitch it is. I think he'd have a pretty good chance of retiring Ricky Weeks. Santiago's 10th start of the year. His season high is six strikeouts. He's got five so far. Wouldn't chase two and two. Strikeout number six, but in the inning, a leadoff single to center, and then Morrison clobbering a two run home run, and it's two to nothing. to the raise up to nothing. Yeah, it's been a pitcher's duel through three innings. Both guys coming out of the gate throwing strikes, getting a bunch of strikeouts. Chris Archer, great command of his slider. But that's where it changed right there. Logan Morrison hits a two run home run into the right field area. And uh, right now, Tampa leads to nothing. Joe Maurer will lead off the fourth inning, then Miguel Sano and Max Kepler.
Bauer struck out swinging. That hasn't happened very often this year. So it was reemerged as one of the tougher guys in the league to strike out, and most of his strikeouts have been looking disputed third strike calls. Well, the ones the one pitch that struck out Joe was the the perfect back foot slider from Chris Archer after throwing a fastball up. He buried that slider. A 90 plus mile an hour slider and Joe swung over the top of it. But Archer has been throwing strikes. Nine of 11 hitters so far first pitch strikes. And Bauer to left. And nice backhanded catch by Dickerson. Bauer with a bullet toward the left field corner, but Dickerson picked it off, one down. For our game break, let's go to Washington. And Bryce Harper crushed one. Into the third deck. Wow. Only counts as one. <laughs> yeah. You don't get extra runs just because of the distance, but 110 miles an hour, we see that every day from Sonoma. So, no big deal. Not lately, he's been striking out a lot as of late. We'll see if he can get into one here. The average has fallen below 300. He went down swinging in the first. Fouled back. Well, Archer has been spot on so far in this game. He's only made a couple mistakes, and those mistakes were out of the zone up. Because he rushed a couple pitches. Let's see if he makes a mistake over the plate for this big man. On the outside corner, and it's 0 2. You watch this angle right here. See Derek Norris's catcher where he sets up. Archer's just been absolutely dotting the eye, hitting his glove almost every time. Right off the end of the bat, that 92 mile per hour slider. Mm. And another slider off the plate, another strikeout, two down. Bring up Kepler. Chris Archer tonight has been absolutely dominant, especially with his slider. It's been as good as any slider we've seen all year long. Just keeping it down in the zone and burying it. And he finally finishes off Miguel Snow with that same pitch. Here's Kepler hit a bouncer to short his first time up. You know, both pitchers have six strikeouts. Yeah. But there seems to be a difference because of the dominance of that slider of Chris Archer. Well, the Rays strike out against everybody. One and oh to Kepler. And now a strike. Change up. Well, that was a great pitch in a great location. Same arm speed as his fastball, but 86 miles an hour versus 96. Rounder to second. Nice hop for Robertson. And a good one, two, three inning for Archer. Handed a two-nothing lead. He protects it through the board.
legacy fans of the game and hello dad <laughs> wherever dad is. He's hoping he's watching TV. Gorgeous night for baseball here and we're happy you have decided to spend at least part of your Memorial Day weekend with Twins TV. Derek Norris will lead off the fifth inning against Santiago who will begin the inning with 74 pitches. Norris Robertson and Beckham in the fifth. And there's strike one. Right, Kepler back. One away. Follow Twins Baseball Live with the MLB.com at bat mobile app. Stay connected to the game's best players all season long with game day, live game video highlights, radio broadcasts, stats, news, and more. Download MLB.com at bat today. It's your number one app for live baseball. Daniel Robertson hit a fly ball to Kepler his first time up. And strike one. Well, Hector coming out this inning and getting ahead with changeups. And uh, maybe that's something Neil talked to in between innings. That to right handed him. batters, though. Yeah, again, to right handers. Mauer tracks the foul pop into the seats. Two for the number nine batter for the Rays. It's in a long way foul. The White Sox and Tigers were supposed to play a doubleheader. First game was rained out, and they're about ready to get the only game started. And it's one of the weirdest pitching matchups you'll ever see. <laughs> you love this. Mike Pelfrey will pitch for the White Sox. Against a team that is paying him eight million dollars. The Tigers released Pelfrey. The White Sox picked him up, sent him to Triple A, brought him up, and so now Pelfrey will be pitching against the team who made him a very rich man this year. Oh, and two. And another foul. Robertson battling Santiago. Tigers have a lot of misspent money with Anabel Sanchez. What's he make? 16 million. 16 He's million. pitching for Toledo now. They released Mark Lowe, reliever, after signing him to a two year deal last year. Just off the plate one and two. Driven to the corner, but foul. And another foul ball. As we watch Hector Santiago try to navigate through this lineup, it's it's kind of a work in progress for him because it's a relatively new delivery. Pitching out of the stretch every pitch. But also trying to alternate his timing in between pitches, even when he's basically in the windup, nobody on base. And uh, see him pausing a little bit before he starts. Left center field gap. Buxton streaks in front of Rosario out number two. Well, that was a ball that I think both outfielders could have caught, but Eddie Rosario doing the right thing and giving way to the center fielder, who's the quarterback. Who gets to make the plays on all the close ones? You can see them both going towards that baseball, and Eddie taking a left and letting Byron Buxton make a nice catch. You played with some great center fielders. Yes, I who, did. Who, who would you rank as the best? Devon White. 
and I don't say that in any disrespect to my great friend and teammate here in Minnesota, Kirby Puckett. But I had Devon White, I had Kenny Lofton, I had Kirby Puckett, I had uh, Chet Lennon for a well, while. I wouldn't put him in the category either one of those three. Right. But I had Gary Pettis before Chet, and he was outstanding. So I was really blessed to have some great center fielders. Tiger Stadium, where it was incredibly 440 feet to center field. Yeah, it's the only place to make a living at Tiger Stadium. <laughs> Down the lines, not so much. No, either line. One and one. And there's a strike. Beckham has struck out twice. And I, I can't help but as you say that, Dick, to, to look at this ballpark here at Target Field, especially on a night like tonight. And, and I really think they got it right. And the fact that the mentions early, you know, was a little bit of scuttle about maybe being a pitcher friendly park, balls weren't flying. But now we've seen that it's turned out to be really a fair ballpark. The dimensions, I think, are fair. And it's so much fun to see three young cats out there that can. Pick them up and lay them down and go chase baseballs all over the place. The Twins are really blessed to have the outfield defense that they have right now. One and two, Santiago to back them. I tell you this, if I was younger, I'd love to pitch for this team with the defense that they're yeah. showing right now and their transition into more of a disciplined offensive team. And softly hit up the middle. A base hit Beckham's aboard with two down. Well, after striking Beckham out once looking and once swinging, he kind of fights one off, fists it into center field. It's more of where he hit it, not how hard he hit it. See this pitch again. And he eats him up down and in. Got in on the handle of the bat. Trademark. Just below the trademark. And now Corey Dickerson. Singled uh, through the wickets up the middle. Tom Kelly would have called it a diamond cutter. Wickets. That's another one I've heard, heard, heard you and Bert for years talk about wickets. Well, you played. I, I have never looked down at my legs and called them wickets. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever played croquet? Uh, no. Well, not, you, you, not, not since I was about seven. All right, but you know, you know, the wicket is. I had no idea. Is that what the hoop is that you hit it through? Or is that yeah. or is that the instrument that you hit the ball? No, the yeah. wicket is the 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 target that you're target. supposed to okay. roll the ball through. All right. Well, I never knew what it was called. I just Swing called it a hoop. Miss. Hit it through the hoop. So right there, Corey Dickerson hit one through the hoop. <laughs> <laughs> one and one to Dickerson. Rays lead two to nothing. Thanks to a Morrison home run with Dickerson aboard in the fourth. Pitch count climbing now for Santiago. And there's the beginning of activity in the Twins bullpen. Craig Breslow out. Just slowly tossing the ball around. And really, Santiago's not in any real trouble, but we see this over and over and over yeah. with him as pitch count approaching 90 to 100 pitches in the fifth, sixth inning. And you know that's precisely what Neil Allen, of course, is manager Paul Mahler trying to get Hector to be a little bit better at navigating through the lineup without so many pitches early in the game. Popped up, and so no tracking it, and making the catch on the edge of the tarp. Didn't uh, panic. Didn't particularly hustle after it. Tracked it. Made the catch. A nice catch for the final out of the inning.
Dave Vargas has had an impactful stay with the Twins since his call up, but that impact, almost all of it, has come from the left side of the plate. Hit the ball hard his first time up, lining out to Suzu, made a leaping catch on the warning track. Strike one. Chris Archer has really been dominant so far. The one ball that's been hit the hardest, like you mentioned, Kenny Vargas. But not much else. Maurer hit a pretty good line yeah. drive his last time. And up. Castro did get yeah. the base hit that ate up the shortstop, Tim Beckham. On the outside corner, and it's not just the strikes, and there have been yeah, plenty of them. Fair. Quality strikes. That's that's awful hard for a hitter right there, and that's a pitcher's pitch. You can see how it. Generally, when you and Burke talk about pitchers' pitches, they're not strikes. That's why it's pitchers' pitch. <laughs> One down in the fifth. Let's go to Kevin Gorg. Thank you, Dick. We're in the Minnesota State Lottery Winner Circle. 100 scratch off tickets are going back to Fergus Falls. We've got Jared, Sarah, and their daughter, Avery. And the great sign, Avery, how you doing there? Look at her. She's having a ball. Her first Twins game. And Dad, we got to ask you. You got great weather. You got these awesome seats. You're watching her experience the Twins in person for the first time. How much fun are you having? Oh, so much fun. It's everything's worth her. Just her first game. So. Yeah, that smile is priceless, and you're getting circled by a World Series hero, Jack Morris. You're taking 100 scratch-off tickets from the Minnesota State Lottery back to Fergus Falls. We just got to dodge some foul balls here. It's been a busy area, boys. Stay safe. Now, Fergus Falls, about was it? 15 miles east of Foxhall, Minnesota. Well, it's right on 94 as you yeah. head towards Fargo. Maybe a little bit more than 15 miles. One strike to Polanco. Slowly to the right side, scooped by Robertson, two down. You know, in comparing Archer's night and Santiago's night, and not trying to compare their stuff because they're not comparable, what we've seen in terms of the pitch count. The difference between getting swings and misses and getting foul balls. Yeah, and Archer already has more strikeouts than Santiago, seven to six. So there's a lot of pitches in just those strikeouts, but we're seeing one of the best pitch games so far against the Twins this year right now with Chris Archer on the mound. Two down, and now Rosario. And he watches it all the way in a called strike. Strike percentages are both good for both pitchers. Yeah, he's both of them, but especially Archer has been ahead of the hitters and counts. All the Twins have is an infield hit with two outs in the third. The right call was made in my mind, but it is the only base runner the Twins have had. Castro hit a smash. Ground ball that hit the mound and the next hop ate up the shortstop will Tim Beckham. Will you change your mind if uh, he goes into no. the ninth inning without giving no. up the hit? You're not going to change your no. mind. No. There's a chopper. This is going to be a tough play. And the play is made by Robertson. A wonderful play by Daniel Robertson. You now Paul wants to keep him on the infield until he gets a chance to look at it. I think he is out. Yeah, right. Unless for some reason Morris has pulled his foot. Wow. Very close. Don't think the Twins will challenge.
Woods baseball presented by State Farm. Sanford Health Injury Report. More and more injuries every day, and three players added to the concussion disabled list, the seven day list. Lonnie Chisenhall collided with a wall. John Peterson, Jacoby Ellsbury. And uh, twins on the medical front really don't have much to report, at least at the major league level. Really tough news today for one of the twins' top. Relief pitching prospects Nick Birdie was off to a great start at Chattanooga. Here's a high fly to deep right. Kepler back at the wall leaps and makes the catch right in front of the 365 foot sign. And Santiago has a quick first out here in the sixth inning. Nick Birdie who is uh, off to a great start with the uh, Chattanooga lookouts pitching to a 0 0.53 ERA. Uh, had a complete tear of his ulnar collateral ligament and he will require Tommy John surgery. There was a chance, I think a really good chance, that if Birdie was promoted to AAA and pitched as well as he did to double A, that he'd have a decent chance to be up here this year. That's how good he's been. I just really I just cannot understand. It's it's more almost commonplace to have Tommy John surgery nowadays and it's gotta be because of max effort. It cannot be anything but that. Because of pitch count. Logan Morrison with the two run home run, the difference in the game. And a strike on the outside corner, one and one. Santiago with 95 pitches. His season high, 111 in Chicago on May 9th. Well, speaking of pitch count, Santiago at 96 now for the day, and that uh, gets Ryan Presley up and down. Here's his last at back, Logan Morrison. Hitting a ball up there by the Fox Sports North. Pre post game. You've, uh, you've uh, spent a good part of your adult life uh, out there. I know you? that place inside and out. I take showers in that curtain out No, there. you don't. Oh, I no, don't. you I don't. don't. I don't, but it looks like a shower. <laughs> Presley getting loose. In fact, it looks like he is loose. Pitches up, and it's two and two. And it's odd, of course, as we've told you that Santiago struggled so much against lefties, and Kiermaier, a lefty, hitting two spots behind Morrison, fouled back. Well. We talked about it earlier that the Tampa Bay Rays are kind of team that lives and dies with the long ball and so far they're up by two because yeah. of the long ball. Other than the home run they've just had a couple of base runners more than the twins it's been a well pitched game on both sides it has been two and two. Off the plate three and two. Presley's. Standing down in the bullpen, and he's not even throwing anymore. He's ready to come in on a moment's notice. Maybe Gordado, his pitching coach, giving a look on the field. I would guess with the pitch count now at 100, Santiago's chances of going six innings aren't very good. Well, he needs two more outs to do it, and uh, I'm sure Paul would be happy with that at this point. Full count. And that'll put him aboard. And now Sousa, who is 0 for 2, and here comes Paul Molitor. And Santiago's able to go five and a third innings. And the pitch count. And just the fact that you know, if the Twins had had uh, some run support for him and he was pitching with a lead, he might have had a little bit longer uh, leash, but not tonight. Captain Hook. <laughs>
showed you the strikeout leaders in recent years and Ben Scherzer on the list and he added 13 more striking out the Padres a season high 13 strikeouts for Scherzer. I was calling the game for the Tigers last year when Max Scherzer struck out what, 21 I think of his former teammates last year so when he gets on a roll he's a tough one this guy can be too he's been on a really good roll lately. Ryan Presley coming out of the pen here to try to get the twins back in the dugout. Presley hasn't given up a hit in his last three outings and picked up eight strikeouts in the 11 outs that he has picked up. So this would be a pretty good matchup one would think for Presley pitching to a lineup that strike out that strikes out more than any other team ever has. Well the difference for Ryan Presley in this last stretch where he's really been pitching well number one what you just saw strike one the greatest pitch in baseball for any pitcher especially relief pitchers that inherit a base from him. But his breaking ball has been a lot better. He's thrown more strikes with his curveball, and it's been very sharp and crisp. Fastball, we've seen him close to 100 miles an hour at times, high 90s. One and one. But it doesn't seem like he misses that many bats with his fastball. A lot of pitches like that right there, where you see the high 90s, but off the plate up. And it's pretty straight and he needs to get ahead maybe on the inner half with that and then be able to dominate. We saw tonight with Chris Archer that his fastball has been down in the zone and that's what made his breaking ball so good. Runner goes and the pitch lifted to right field. Morrison can't find it now he retreats Kepler with the catch out number two. Well given the fact that the Twins had two double headers in four days what the bullpen has done. Yeah it's impressive but tip your cap to the starting pitchers who for most of the time especially through the double headers ate up some extra outs. Well I, I think I could tip my hat to both of them. I think they've complimented each other. The fact that the starters have gotten deeper has given enough rest to those guys in the pen and they've responded accordingly. But it's been fun to watch here for the last couple series anyway for the twins even though two double headers in four games I don't think that's fun for anybody outside ball one but if you would have you know a week ten days ago told Paul Molitor that you know in your homestand we're going to have a lot of weather issues you're going to have two double headers then you got to go to Baltimore and play a team that hardly ever loses at home the deep drive to right and gone a home run Kiermaier hits a two run home run and it's four to nothing and Presley who's been bitten by the home run ball gives one up to Kiermaier just Kiermaier's fourth of the year we talk about Ryan Presley and how straight his fastball is. And I think that's been an issue for him for quite some time. It's way up there as far as velocity, but straighter than straight, and a lot of times up in the zone or out over the plate. And it uh, doesn't matter for major league hitters, especially a home run hitting team like Tampa, how hard you throw it. If you don't put it in a good spot, you're not going to have very good results. Here's Ricky Weeks. He struck out twice. We talked about the matchup favoring Presley. He's a strikeout pitcher. This is a strikeout lineup. And Souza hits a fly ball to right. Kiermeyer hits a two run home run, and the lead is doubled. Three runs charged to Hector Santiago in five and a third innings, though. Fourth run, Kiermeyer's home run charged, of course, to Presley, and it's fouled away two strikes to Weeks. 82 at bats for weeks, 43 strikeouts, and now Presley has him in an 0 2 hole. Yeah. 
And now one and two. That pitch right there for Ryan Presley, if he would hit the middle of the plate, the fact that it breaks two feet and is down in the zone, he could he could drop that right on the middle of the plate and have better results. When it's off the plate, everybody can recognize that it's off. There's another and straight we rifles back. one right up the middle on a 97 mile per hour offering. And Presley hasn't struck out a batter yet, trying to get the last out of the sixth inning. The home run by Kiermaier, the 70th hit by the Rays this year. And by night's end, that might be the top total in the American League. Yankees had 69 coming into play today. Houston had 68. Oakland had 68. Here's Derek Norris, and there is ball one. Norris with a couple of outfield flies. Went started the day with a two game lead over Cleveland. Cleveland had an early lead, but now Kansas City leading the Indians 6 4 in the eighth. Just outside. And it's 2 0. And there's a swing and a miss. 2 and 1. Chopper to short. And the short way ends the inning. A walk to a home run, and it's born of it, Tampa Bay. Has just been dominant with his slider. 12 strikeouts in his last uh, game that he pitched against the Yankees tonight. The Twins are getting a taste of one of the best sliders they've seen all year long. You can see how he's just been dotting the eye down and away from right handers and hitting that glove from his catcher, Derek Norris. It's just been impressive to watch Chris Archer 
execute that slider tonight. And the only reason the Twins have one instead of a zero is because Jason Castro was able to get a good solid hit up the middle. But other than that, Archer has been lights out. Byron Buxton struck out. One of seven the strikeout victims for Archer tonight. And a first pitch strike. The fans know that Longoria is about as good a third baseman in the league at playing the ball in front of him, but we might see Buxton at some point this weekend try to put down a bun up the third baseline. One and one. Archer loves pitching in this ballpark. He's beaten the Twins three times with an ERA of under one. Popped up left center field, plenty of hang time. Dickerson, Kiermeyer, and it's Kiermeyer with the catch one away. That'll bring up Jason Castro, who has the only hit. He's the only base runner the Twins have had tonight. Well, he hit this ball hard, and we might argue whether or not that's a hit or an error, but it was considered a hit. And that's it. That's the only blemish for Chris Archer tonight. Now, are you and I going to argue that? No, we're not arguing. Okay. I just want to know what you would do if he goes eight two thirds and uh, can't change it on that basis, can you? Well, okay. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna come out with it. For me, it's not a hit. Really? The guy's been standing there since Abner invented the game. He's supposed to catch it. Can't help what the hop is. It was an extraordinary effort. That's what an error is supposed to be. I had it a hit all the way. I know you. I'll go to and, my and, grave. You know what? It's in the book. <laughs> One hit. The well, official but, score. Yeah. Who, really, our opinion doesn't matter. His does. That's true. And he gave him a hit. And he can't change it. Or shouldn't, in my book, change it if they the have Twins changed it before. Late they, in game. It, it has happened before. Because of it? because of a threat of a no hitter. Uh, I think that has actually happened. Okay. All right. It's probably been a lot less decisive of hit or error than that. Two and one to Castro. Castro will take the hit. The average sitting at 200 at the start of the game. Chris Archer has been in control tonight. And whether it's a no hitter or not, he has had no hit stuff. And we just witnessed that last pitch. We just talked about Ryan Presley and how straight his fastball is. Well, Archer's fastball tonight has been very straight itself. But the fact that he's putting in good spots, see how this hits the corner away. It barely moves at all. But look at the location. And that's what it's always about. Down and away to a left handed batter rather than down and in. And now three and two. I just think the plane, the fact that he's throwing his fastball from thigh high down to the knees, down in the zone, and that's what complements that great slider of his because the hitter sees basically they, they can't pick up the spin until very late. So they see fastball that's down, they're going to have to swing at it, and then it's all of a sudden out of the zone a few times. Right, call Castro sent down the first three ball count that Archer's had tonight, and he ends up striking out Castro anyway. Two down. Eighth strikeout. This is the fastball that he just comes back on the inner half. Now, he missed on this one, but it confused Jason Castro, is probably sitting on a slider. Woods baseball on Fox Sports North is presented by State Farm. Combine home and auto and see how much you can save. Two down and now Brian Dozier. All I can say is I, I'm glad I'm not a Twins hitter tonight. This is uh, pretty impressive stuff from Chris Archer. A mile in the air. It's back. And just out of play. And you could tell early, couldn't you? I mean, in that first inning, he strikes out the side. Yeah. And he's throwing 97 with a 92 mile per hour wipeout slider. Yeah, we we uh, it's been a few years since since I've seen Chris Archer throwing the high 90s. I know when he 
first came out of the scene for the Rays he was throwing it up there once in a while but the best slider I've seen him throw at all in the big leagues and it's really because he's had total command of his fastball too and the changeups he's thrown a few changeups that have been also right where he wants to throw them. Beckham in the hole fires across and another one two three inning for Chris Archer. game and the Twins have had a tough time with Chris Archer here tonight. Well a pair of home runs for the Tampa Bay Rays one off of uh, the starter Hector Santiago another one off of Ryan Presley Kiermaier and Logan Morrison both hitting home runs and the rest has been the guy on the mound for the Rays. It's Chris Archer night and he has been dominant eight strikeouts has not thrown more than 14 pitches in any inning, so he's making it very efficient. And now Ryan Presley misses the inside corner to Daniel Robertson. Robertson 0 for 2 with a pair of outfield flies. Ray is trying to get over the 500 mark. They've been at 500 15 times. This ball hit on the ground, rolling to Dozier. One away. I'll bring up Tim Beckham. Join Fox Sports North Saturday, June 3rd for the Girls on the Run Twin Cities Spring 5K at Normandale Community College as we inspire girls to be healthy and confident. To register, visit foxsportsnorth.com slash events. One down here in the seventh and now Beckham. Swing and a miss. Greg Breslow getting loose. So far, Hector Santiago struck out six. Right? Presley hasn't struck out anybody, and the Rays, uh, by their standards, are making very good contact here tonight. Not talking about the two home runs or putting the ball in play so far. Normally, uh, more than they normally do. Well, Ryan doesn't seem to have his wipeout breaking ball tonight. He's thrown a lot of fastballs, uh, some of which have been hit fairly hard, but doing a better job right now with Beckham to locate it. This one, Castro wants a fastball in, see if he can hit his glove. And Beckham strikes out for the third time. That'll bring up Corey Dickerson. This last pitch. You can see that ball had a little sink to it. He got on top of that, but look at the location. That's why the result was better. Partial season ticket packages are now available in the Delta Sky 360 Club and Catch. Become a twin season ticket holder today. You'll gain access to the Twins Sweet Spot program. 
Learn more at twinsbaseball.com or by calling 833 Twins. Presley out, Breslow in with two gone in the seventh inning. Two run home runs. And the Twins are sending their second relief pitcher into the game, left hander Craig Breslow. His 18th game of the year. Craig Breslow has uh, been one of those guys where Paul brings him in to either pitch an inning or two, uh, sometimes just to get out a left hander. He's been better with his breaking ball to the left handers, getting more of a break. But he too has been working on a relatively new delivery. Uh, Throwing more where his arm is dropped down in a different slot than he's used to over his career. And it takes time, but he's uh, getting it fine tuned as of late. Corey Dickerson with the bases empty and two down. Up high. Starts him off with the breaking ball. It had a lot of break, but because his arm was, his elbow was down, his body rushed a little bit and was up in the zone. Look at the damage done by or two Twins relievers. You know, Presley's had a rough start, but some encouraging signs later, or uh, as of late. The other relievers, frankly, have done a pretty good job. Haley, of course, a Rule Five guy, and he's uh, had a couple of rough innings. The guy that's uh, really struggled has been Matt Belisle, and not so much because of the hits, but the walks. Belisle with 15 innings pitched and a dozen, excuse me, 11 walks. Yeah, that'll catch up to you eventually. You've got to throw strikes, especially out of the bullpen. And it's kind of uh, it's been a work in progress for Paul Molitor trying to find where guys are going to be comfortable knowing their roles and when they're going to pitch in games. But I think we're seeing a little bit of a transformation where Taylor Rogers is going to be kind of a setup guy when it works out that way. Certainly Brandon Kinsler is the late guy. Two and two. No back over by the raised dugout. And then uh, keeping in mind of course that tomorrow the twins are going to call up Alberto Mejia to make the start. But of course there's a back half of that roster move. Someone will be taken off the roster to yeah. accommodate Mejia's inclusion. Right now the twins with eight relief pitchers. Five righties three lefties. Up and away three and two. Again, that's why the news today regarding Nick Birdie is so disappointing. JT Chagua started the year hurt. Now he's back. You're looking maybe for some help in uh, the bullpen core from within the organization. And, uh, it hasn't been the healthiest 
Well, Birdie, another one of those guys in the minor leagues, Twins fans haven't seen yet, but he's got a, a power arm. Right. And uh, I guess more so than the guys that don't have power arms, those are the guys that seem to be going down with Tommy Johnson. Yeah. Three and two, Breslow to Dickerson trying to wrap up the Rays' seventh inning. Another foul ball. Russell has already thrown eight pitches in this at bat. There have been three two strike fouls. On the ground to Dozier. And Breslow gets his man. Only three men back in the top of the seventh. We'll see if the Twins can get anything started against Chris Archer. Baseball break brought to you by T-Mobile. Max Scherzer, as we showed you earlier, with the 13 strikeouts against the Padres. Tim Edelman with an outstanding effort over the Phillies. And Mike Moustakas with his 12th home run, leading a comeback win for Kansas City. They have now beaten the Indians 6-4. to four. Danny Salazar was stacked to a stake to an early lead for the Indians, but he couldn't hold it. And Chris Archer has been staked to an early lead. And doesn't look like he's ever going to let go. Joe Maurer will lead off the seventh. Well, well, Joe squared one up his last time out, lined a ball to the left fielder. Corey Dickerson, who made a nice catch. But not very many balls even put in play off Archer tonight. Maurer, Sano, and Kepler. And there's not just a first pitch strike, but he put it right on the corner. Basically, and again, different type of stuff, but Archer looks as sharp now as we've seen in most of Irvin Santana starts. Not just strikes, but quality well, strikes. I think Archer's just got even better stuff. Oh, be sure. Up the middle, and there's your clean single. And a leadoff hit here in the seventh. Good start to the inning for the Twins, and now let's check in with Kevin Gore. Yeah, if you're trying to cover into the lead, this is the right guy to be at the plate. A nice little milestone for Miguel Sano. Monday in Baltimore, he got to 155 career RBIs. Did so in his games 236. So that's the career games. 155 RBIs, 236 career games. Twins and Senators franchise. This goes back to 1920. The third fastest to get to 155 career RBIs. Irv Norin, 222. Marty Cordova, 228. Sano, those 236. He has been blasting the baseball. Nobody's been doing that tonight, but he cut the lead in half with one swing right here. 
And Sano's already struck out twice tonight against Chris Archer with sliders off the plate. You and Gorgie watched her Norton, right? <laughs> <laughs> like Tory Hunter last weekend saying I was born in 1942. Another slider, another swing and a miss. Was he close? <laughs> no. <laughs> you and I are contemporaries, pal. All right, come on, let me up a little. And it's the same pitch. I mean, Sano is biting it or after it, chasing it every time. It's a slider. Well, just you know, inches off the plate. The thing, the thing with Archer is he's he's putting it in such a great location that if you start diving out there trying to hit the ball to right, he stands you up with a fastball. It's going to eat your bat alive. So you've got to, you know, you've got to stay with your plan, cover the plate. But he's just been so spot on with that pitch. There's a fastball sailing wide at 99. Yeah, and you can see what his body control does. That's how you get Tommy John surgery right there. That was a total max effort on that last pitch. And quite honestly, a wasted pitch because it's so high and so erratic that hitters going to take it. One and two to Sano. Ninety seven, but not close. Pitch count so good. This is just his 75th pitch. He's had five one two three innings out of the six. This may be the best pitch game we've seen this year. So far. Twins do have their leadoff man on Joe Maurer at first. Dribble foul. So no at least made contact. Archer really exerting himself in this at bat. It's like he wants to prove to Miguel Sano who he is. And he's kind of falling all over the place. That's because he's trying that little extra and not keeping his body in, in total control like he's been when he's been effortless at times. And dribbled toward Gene Glenn. Twins have done this before. They fell behind Chris Sale for nothing. They came back to tie the game in the middle innings. And of course, came back from five nothing in Baltimore to start that series and won the ball game. Another two two to Sano. Ah, the outside corner. And Sano finally took one. And it's a call third strike. Sixth straight strikeout for Miguel Sano. Fox traps presented by Carrier. Well, it's another slider right on the edge of the strike zone. Too good to take when you're have two strikes on you. You've got to protect a little bit better than that. But Archer's just been fabulous tonight. Ninth strikeout. And now Kepler, two no, ground ball outs. No walks. And one three ball count. That's to the backstop, but Maurer will go to second. And another one where it looked like Archer tried to put a little extra behind it when 97 has been plenty good enough. That one clocked at 98. Well, this is where strikeouts, I think, become too important when you're trying that hard. Chris Archer, he's been among the league leaders over the last couple of years in strikeouts, and I'm sure it's it's something he strives to do. But it's more important that you keep the pitch count going that you've had, and now you see he's starting to misfire because of the ad extra exertion. You, you start to get out of your rhythm a little bit. 2 0. Oh. Maybe Kepler will get a mistake here and they can do some damage. Lifted to short left. Beckham wants it. Two down. And that'll bring up Vargas. 
This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Minnesota Twins and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent of the Minnesota Twins. Vargas hit a liner to the warning track in right. Souza made a nice catch back in the second inning, and then he struck out swinging in the bit. Side ball one. And here in the seventh inning, Archer's strike percentage has not been nearly as good. Yeah, his body, you just watch his body, as, you know, don't even see see where the pitch goes. You just watch his body, you can see that it's different. And he's been flying over all over the place. And another one to the backstop. Bauer to third base. You know what's happening, Dick? This is from my experience. His legs are starting to get tired. When your legs start going, you do all sorts of crazy things to try to make up for it. You speed up your upper body. You start flying open. You see this one, he just really spiked into the ground. Nothing Derek Norris could do. So two wild pitches since Joe Mauer to third base. Now 2 0 oh to Vargas. The Twins have a runner at third base, but Bauer was wild pitched there after his leadoff single. A drive to right center field and down for a hit. <laughs> <laughs> I've never Steven seen says, uh, I hope he slipped because if he dove for that ball, I can only imagine that perhaps he lost it in his lights, but he dove for a ball that landed 20 feet from him. Vargas with an RBI I, I, I wish we could hear the conversation right here between Kiermaier and Sousa <laughs> because he's got to be telling me, are you kidding me? I mean, it's the meantime, Kenny Vargas picks up an RBI, but hopefully this angle will show you. Watch where he dives. Are you kidding me? You can't make that up. <laughs> That's one of the funniest things I've seen this year. <laughs> oh, Lord. Here's Polanco. The twins are on the board. <laughs> you can imagine the fans in the overhang in right field letting Souza hear about that a little bit. <laughs> Well, you know, <laughs> and he can laugh at himself, so that's good. <laughs> Keeps from crying. One and all with Archer falling behind regularly here in the seventh inning. Right back to 96 instead of 97, 98, and in a good spot, one and one. Polanco with a fly to center and a ground ball to second. Vargas driving in his 19th run to get the Twins on the board. Now two and one. Here's Kevin Cash. Two and one to the twin shortstop. Three and one, and again not close. Now, why would his legs be tired? I'm, it's unfair to even ask you, but the pitch count's been good. He's had no pitches under duress, and now pitch count's up to 87. And Longoria comes in to talk to him. Well, and the guy regularly throws well over 100 pitches. It happens. Entered the inning with what 65 something like yeah, that. They're not robots and there's days where you tire quicker. And this is a typically a night where you'd feel really strong. It's perfect weather. It's getting a little cooler as the night goes on. That should give you a little more. Energy. And a lazy fly to left. And Archer is able to survive his shakiest inning with just one run allowed.
LaPanta inside Mall of America studio. Same two teams tomorrow afternoon at Target Field in the second game of this series. Join us at 12.30 on Fox Sports North for Twins Live. 1 o'clock first pitch from the ballpark. Now let's head back over to Target Field. I think tomorrow's going to be just fine. I don't know about Sunday, but we hope for good weather for the three day games in a row starting tomorrow, Sunday, and then, of course, Memorial Day itself. Just a special atmosphere or different atmosphere. I don't know if you sense it. I mean, the crowd might be a little bit bigger than uh, we've seen, but it's warmer. I think fans generally are more into the game. There's a din here that uh, I hadn't noticed before. And you this know, is what the Twins, I think, unable to get anything going against Archer. Yeah, I think the Twins fans are still waiting to see what they've been seeing on the road here at home. Yeah. You know, they come here and they're excited about the first game of the series after a really good road trip again. And then you run into Chris Archer, and it's one of those nights. Well, he certainly has been dominant. The Twins did get on the board. And now in the eighth, Breslow will start with Longoria, and then he'll face Morrison. Foul to the screen. Breslow had a long battle with Dickerson before he finally got him. Two and one, two Longoria. That's hit to left. Rosario over to the gap. And nice running catch. Well, route efficiency about perfect on that. Eddie Rosario went right to the baseball. It was a dead sprint. And we talk about Kepler and Buxton all the time, but Eddie Rosario gets a great read on this ball. And he's got to run full speed all the way to it. Nice catch. One down, and now Logan Morris. And fans out in left field with an Ed E. Champ. Yeah. That's nice. Guardado in the bullpen is probably you know, puffing yeah. out his chest yeah, right now. They, they still all, remember me. <laughs> he's telling all the guys <laughs> in the pen, "Hey, they're talking about me again." One and zero. Morrison with the two run home run that started the scoring and then he walked in front of Kiermaier's home run. Both home runs going to right field and landing in the overhang area. Good off speed breaking ball right there from Craig Breslow had Morrison out in front. Getting loose in the Twins bullpen. He may come in after Morrison here. Down and away, and it's two and one. Lyle did not see any action on the road, so he he could use some work. Has a pitch since May 19th in a week. On the ground weekly. To Dozier. Two down. And here comes Paul Molitor. Businesses of all sizes gain an edge by hosting their clients during a Twins game at Target Field. Take advantage of all the Target Field has to offer from a private suite to special group seating arrangements. Learn more at twinsbaseball.com slash groups or call 833 Twins. Ask about a Twins group outing. Another good outing for Craig Breslow faced three men, got them all, and now he will yield to Matt Belay.
Well, how many times you see a guy make a needless dive in the outfield and he hits third the next inning? Steven Souza will hit <laughs> against oh, Matt Belisle. I've never seen that kind of <laughs> dive. So this is my first, I guess. To you see Belisle's numbers, and he's had a couple of very bad innings. And when you're in the role he's in, uh, that you can't recover from that. And so he will pitch now. And <laughs> Souza getting a little extra round of applause from the fans here at Target Field after his phantom dive in right field. And the biggest issue for Belisle again has been walks. He's had a couple outings where he's only pitched a third of an inning and walked two men. He's had, well, specifically, May 26th in Texas, two thirds of an inning, five earned runs, two walks. And then a week and a half later against the Red Sox, here, a third of an inning, six earned runs, and again, two more walks. So we're going to miss. Well, and you go a week without being in the game, and you know it's hard to have real good combine. Right. But, but the, you know the opponent batting average is you know 246, just one home run in 15 innings. So, uh, with those simple numbers, it's an easy fix. Get Matt Belisle to throw more strikes. I'm sure that's in the analytics somewhere. <laughs> Two and one. Deep to left field. And into the second deck, a home run for Sousa. The second home run allowed by Belisle in 15 innings. And all five Tampa Bay runs have come on home run. Yeah, we talked about it early in the broadcast that Tampa was a team with a lot of home runs and a lot of strikeouts. Well, they haven't struck struck out that many times, only seven. And for them, that's pretty good night because they've been averaging 10. But three home runs again here tonight. So now if I'm Eddie Rosario, I'll make a dive for that. Just to kind of put a ringer on Sousa's dive. Yeah, you might be able to do that if you're up by 10, but when you're trailing <laughs> by five, I don't think Paul now, would appreciate that. Here's Kiermeyer, ball one. Kiermeyer homered with a man aboard in the sixth. And now low to a no. In the outside corner. The home run came on a 2 1 pitch, and now Belial will do, deliver a 3 2 pitch. And you can see clearly off the plate. Fly ball, left field. Easy play for Rosario. A home run for Souza. An interesting bottom of the seventh. For Souza, and then he made a bench for it with the long home run at the top of the eighth.
Tampa leads 5-1 as we sail on to the bottom of the eighth. Stay with us directly after this contest. For Twins Live, presented by CenturyLink, we will have a good look at Chris Archer and that devastating slider. He has been menacing on the Twins tonight. We'll also show you how Kenny Spargus got the Twins on the board, broke the shutout. We'll bring you inside the manager's office. We'll hear from Paul Mulder on what he saw from this brilliant pitcher and what the Twins need to do to still win this series here this weekend. All right, thank you, Kevin. And Archer back out there. He wobbled a little bit. Maurer hit the second pitch of the inning for a sharp single to center. And then Archer was battling some control issues, or so it seemed. Now Rosario, Buxton, Castro will face him in the eighth. One strike. Twins have had their hands full off of Archer. He's been ahead of everybody, it seems like. Strike one, strike one, strike one. And that is the pitcher's best friend. But dominance with his breaking ball, not throwing hardly any pitch over the whooping zone is what That's I That's it well to left field, retreating is Dickerson. He's back to the wall. And that ball hits the wall and or Dickerson. Rosario around second. He'll hold up there with a double. It looked to me like Dickerson jumped and the ball hit about it where his feet were. You see this replay. I, I mean, again, another guy that either was in the lights or totally misjudged it. See the ball? That was one of the few pitches out over the plate. Eddie Rosario going with it. And he didn't look. He just jumped. You can he see climbed it. the wall, and yeah. the ball hit the wall before he could turn around. The ball somewhere down by his waist. My goodness. Byron Buxton with Rosario at second after his leadoff double. Buxton with a strikeout and a fly ball to center. Foul back. One strike. Twins forced Archer to throw out of the stretch a little bit last inning where they did produce the one run. A couple wild pitches got Joe Mauer to third and then a base hit from Kenny's Vargas. It takes a lot more time out of the stretch. The run the Twins got in the seventh uh, kept their string alive. They've yet to be shut out this year. Been a handful of games where they've only scored one run. One and one. Just outside. Huge lead at second for Rosario. Swing and a miss, two and two. Archer does a lot of counting in his brain. He's just trying to disrupt the count, not always have a repetitive cadence so that base runner doesn't get a good jump out there. Eddie Rosario, he would take third when he gets a chance. We've seen him do it in the past. But you're down by four. Yeah. You want to make sure that the hitter gets a chance to hit. Buxton blown away by a 98 mile per hour fastball. Strikeout number 10, no walks. Castro will bat. Castro with a single and infield hit in the third, and then he was called out on strikes in the sixth. Outside, ball one. Twins were visited during batting practice today by former twin Josh Willingham, who came by today.
short tenure with the Twins, were one of the more popular players to come through here. Kind of hard not to like Josh Williams. He's just a great guy. Yeah, he was uh, a good teammate for a lot of his buddies that were still in uniform. One and one to Jason Castro. Off the end of the bat foul. Justin Haley getting loose. He'll probably get an innings worth of work here tonight, too. That's one thing about Paul Motter, Neil Allen, of course, even Eddie Gordado, they all have input and try to keep guys sharp, and these are the kind of games where you're not quite back within striking distance, and you maybe want to get some guys a little bit of work. And Castro strikes out. Number two. That'll bring up Dozier. Let's watch this last slider. That one stayed up a little bit higher than a lot of them, but still had enough break that Jason Castro swings over the top of it. Dozier, two, uh, two strikeouts and a bouncer to short. Toward the hole and through for a base hit. Rosario around third and he will score. And Dozier through the shift with a hot ground ball and it's five to two. Well, there's a case where the shift might have backfired. Had there been a shortstop at the normal shortstop position, there's a chance that would have been an out, but Brian hits it right where he normally would be. And it finds a hole in between the shift. Second baseman in the shortstop. Andy Rosario able to easily get around third base. It's been kind of the feeling here tonight where Archer's had the Twins under his thumb all night long. But if Bauer can reach here, Sano's power, if he can hit this inning, would represent the tying run. Be all right with you, wouldn't it? Well, I think for just about everybody in our viewing audience, be an exciting at bat. Mauer singled sharply up the middle his last time up. Hit a line drive for an out back on the fourth and then struck out in the first. So he's actually hit the ball hard twice tonight against Archer. And Joe's going to make him work here. He sees that pitch count at 101. He knows that there's some activity now in the Tampa Bay bullpen. And Joe's not opposed to getting deep into a count. Dozier is not going anyplace. Down by three runs and with Sano on deck. If you're a, a pitcher, you can't help but admire the target that Derek Norris has given Archer. It's absolutely, a, a, you know, he's not a late shifting guy. He gets that glove up and gives him a target. Left handers Alvarado, they say he can throw 100 miles per hour. Column A, they're closer. Outside, and it's two and one. It would be an interesting scenario to play out if Joe walks or gets a base hit. What would Kevin Cash do with Archer? He struck out Sano three times. Yeah. You roll the dice. <laughs> are, are the odds in your favor? 104th pitch for Archer. I think that's going to determine more than anything. Jacked his swing, and it's three and one. Twins had a similar opportunity in the seventh. They scored a run. And Polanco was ahead of the count, and had he walked, Rosario would have come to the plate representing the tying run. But then Polanco lifted a lazy fly to left, and that was the end of the inning. 
Bruins have scored once here. Dozier's at first. Three and one to Joe Mauer. And now three and two. Dozier will take off. He had a pitch to hit right there. This archer is still maintaining his velocity. You can see right there. 50 of the pitches he's thrown tonight, 95 miles an hour or higher. Full count to Joe Mauer. Dozier goes. Ball four. And Dozier will round second hold up there. And here comes Sano against whomever as the tying run. First walk of the night for Chris Archer. And that brings the tying run to the plate in the big bopper, Miguel Sano. Kevin Cash on his way out of the mound. And the most relieved man in the ballpark might be Miguel Sano himself. 106 pitches per start, and that's where Archer leaves the ball game. He made Miguel Sano strike out three times on what, 11, 12 pitches? So Sano will hit against somebody else when we come back. Call me. Well, the big man will have his chance. Two men on. He represents the tying run, and he'll face the Tampa Bay closer, Colome. Alex Colome has faced Sano twice and retired him, but has not struck him out. And Sano enters this at bat, having struck out in his last six at bats. Going back to Baltimore. Well, he could get a little redemption here and start the weekend. Swing of the bat right here. Big swing and a miss on another slider down and away. Yeah, that was a Chris Archer slider right there. Colomay just dotted it down and away. And another big swing for Sano. One strike to Miguel Sano. Block with Norris backhanding it. He's lucky that one didn't get to the backstop. Miguel Sano needs to think right field here. Instead of trying to be a hero, smooth the line, 
Got Max Kepler coming up next. Only one infielder on the right side. One and one to Sano. Oh, that was his pitch. It looked like Colomay got a little bit too much of the plate, and Sano swung through it. It's a changeup, but it's left over the heart of the middle instead of down and away. One and two. Miguel Sano has struck out seven times in a row. Twins get one, leave two, and now trail five to two as we head to the ninth. Baseball presented by State Farm. Miguel Sano's are strikeouts are becoming more frequent and they're looking very similar. Well, he's had some awful good pitches, pitchers' pitches to try to hit. Colomay starts him out with a perfect slider. Then he spikes one down in the dirt, throws a pretty good changeup, but leaves it in a whooping zone and then throws the perfect slider again. That's been a tough pitch for Snow all night long, and that's just a tough pitch, period. Justin Haley will come in with the Twins down five to two, and he will face Ricky Weeks, Derek Norris, and Daniel Robertson. Nine game, and like uh, Blyle, Haley's ERA in a couple of games was really blossom, and it's going to take the better part of the year for him to get that back to respectability. Weeks with two strikeouts and a single. Strike one. They talk about Justin Haley and his delivery. He's a crossfire guy. He steps and then throws across his body. And it's so important for guys like him to finish. It doesn't matter that much if you're closed like he is, but you've got to really bend your back and finish towards the catcher. In order to have that ability to repeat your delivery, foul away two and two. Twins weren't the only team that were interested in picking up Haley as a Rule Five guy. And uh, of course, part of that Rule Five is uh, you're going to stay with the major league team. 
the Padres wanted him, the Angels wanted him, the Twins ended up with him. And now three and two. Of course, what the Twins want this year is for Haley to contribute and be able to get some outs in situations like this and a high fastball at 90 strikes weeks out for the third time one down eighth strikeout for Tampa that ball out of the zone up weeks just tardy again. And now Derek Norris, two outfield flies and a grounder to short. Well, right now the Twins are a contending team, and the hope is that will be the case at the All-Star break and beyond. And contending teams generally don't carry a Rule Five guy. It's you know the complexion of things has changed substantially here with the Twins with their good start and their first place uh, uh, in the standings. And so the the Haley situation might not be as clear as it was a month ago. Well, you know we can talk pitching, which I love to do all the time, um, and the fact that the Twins just haven't changed a whole lot on the whole pitching front. Fly ball center field. Buxton over a few steps. And that's out number two. But it's going to come down to that. When it's all said and done, if I know anything about this game and watching it for 40 years or so, that uh, it'll come down to pitching. Well, that's why in a role like this, and so far he's he's done great. You know, he's as a rule five guy, he's Got to have some role, whether it's uh, pitching the ninth inning when you're behind three runs. There are no entitled spots on a contending team's roster when it's limited to just 25 men. No, and that's the thing about being in the bullpen. It doesn't matter where you are. Every time you go out there, there's a meaning and a purpose. And if you want to survive out there, you have to contribute. Otherwise, there's a lot of minor league teams and a, and a bunch of other teams. Period. That uh, you might get another chance at, but you, you can't ever take for granted when you're on the major league mound of what your responsibility is. And it's his delivery, the deception in his delivery, that makes his fastball faster than it actually is. Yeah, it's hard to pick up, and he's coming from a pretty good angle. That's all part of that cross-firing, uh, you know, the way he steps towards the third base line, and then his body follows his leg as it's planted. You can see he even starts that way. Down and away, two and two. It's not ideal. Most pitching coaches would prefer you square up, but I pitch with a lot of guys that. That threw across their body, and they had good major league careers. Popped up, straight up, and it looks playable for Castro. Staggers a little bit, makes the catch, and a good inning for Haley as he retires all three many faces in the top of the ninth.
Pelicans are on the verge of getting the tying run to the plate in the seventh. They did get the tying run to the plate in the eighth, and now they'll try to mount something in the ninth. Archer will watch Alex Colomay try to finish off the Twins, and a four-out save. Kepler will lead things off in the ninth. Kepler, then Vargas, then Polanco, and then the Twins hope a few more. He's had six men to the plate in the eighth. And then need to do at least that here in the ninth. One and one. Kepler with a couple of ground balls and a pop up. Now you're really not losing a lot. When you go from Chris Archer to Callaway, he's got pretty much the same arsenal fastball, curveball, changeup. Down and in. Center. Kiermeyer back and he makes the catch on the edge of the track. Kepler spanked it pretty good, one away. Time now for what's next, brought to you by Century Link. Jake Odorizzi going for the Rays, Adalberto Mejia going for the Twins. Twins will make a roster move after the game today to allow Mejia's addition to the roster. 12 30 pregame, game time a little after 1 o'clock. Well, it's going to be important for Mejia to get ahead early, try to get a little depth out of him. Four Twins relievers in this game tonight. Vargas with an RBI single in the seventh. Archer poised to pick up his fourth win of the year and his fourth win here at Target Field. That's down the line and in the seats. And fourth win against no losses. He's been perfect so far. By Archer's standards, the Twins did a pretty good job. They got, they got two runs against him tonight. Usually he gives up one. Well, he was sharp. 11 strikeouts, only one walk. This one to the corner. Chased by Dickerson, and that ball not caught, kicked by fact, in fact by Dickerson, and Vargas has a double. Dickerson's had uh, a couple of unique plays out there on the wall or by the wall. Well, this one he kind of parallels the wall a little bit, so he's got a little bit better view and an understanding of where the ball is. Kenny Vargas. And it golfs this one down by his ankles. He never took his eye off the ball, but still couldn't come up with it. Vargas lifted for a pinch runner. And Polanco will bat. The Twins are one base runner away from getting the tying run to the plate. Rosario's in the on deck circle. Polanco is over three, but he's put the ball in play three times tonight against Archer. On the outside corner, a strike. Kepler hit his ball hard. Vargas's ball kept tailing uh, Dickerson.
And Polanco tried to drop one down in front of Longoria. Foul, two strikes. Well, stranger things have happened. The Twins have pretty much played the entire game. That's one thing Paul insists that they grind it all out. You never know what can happen. We'd love to see the tying run come to a plate again, get another chance. Two strikes to Jorge Polanco. Just missed the outside edge. Close pitch. Came right back, back with the breaking ball. This one even deeper down in the dirt. Blanco, it looked like he'd already made up his mind and he chases that one. And now Rosario will try to keep the game alive for Robbie Grossman, who is taken over in the on deck circle for Byron Buxton, who was just called back to the dugout. Rosario doubled off the left field wall his last time up. Down to their last out. And lifted foul over the tarp one strike. Rosario has shown a lot of power to left field. It's a pitch up in the zone. He'll drive it that way. Takes up and away one and one. We haven't seen this very often, but Tampa Bay has got the shift on the right side to Eddie Rosario. Another foul over the Tampa Bay dugout. Colomay trying to pick up the save, a four out save, and end the Twins four game losing or winning streak. One and two. Beckham, the shortstop, throws to first, and the Rays win the opener. Thanks to a great pitching performance by Chris Archer. Well, Archer was very, very sharp tonight. He picks up a win. His uh, fourth win and three defeats. Dominant tonight. Best slider I think uh, the Twins hitters have seen all night. And they're going to have to regroup and try to pick up game two tomorrow. Tom Hanneman, the Twins have had four four game winning streaks. They haven't been able to put together a five gamer. And the four gamer they took into this game has just ended. Dick, you can make it four straight wins for the Rays now at Target Field following the 5 2 victory here tonight. Up next on Twins Live, presented by CenturyLink, we'll talk about Chris Archer's performance on the mole. Kenny Vargas at the plate. We'll hear from Paul Molitor and preview tomorrow's starting.